Good afternoon, everybody. Let me thank you for um, your flexibility. The, the meeting that we attended went a little bit later than uh, was planned, um, but we had the opportunity to kick off Safer DC Week um, and talk about various uh, things affecting the district, the mayor, and the council. Let me acknowledge that we're joined by our CFO, Jeffrey DeWitt, uh, who also made a presentation about um, the many topics around fed uh, federal tax reform that are being discussed and how they might, if implemented, affect uh, the residents of the District of Columbia and the district government itself. Uh, we also had the opportunity to hear from the Chief of Police about MPD recruitment and Dr. Jennifer Smith, who is the Director of the District's Department of Forensic Sciences, about the uh, DFS um, annual report and its accomplishments over the last three years. So uh, we're here to take any specific questions about recruitment and retention at MPD, uh, the DFS annual report, uh, and if there are other questions related to the meeting, I'm happy to address them too. Uh, the chief is gonna talk to you uh, more specifically about its new website, um, housing programs, the Anacostia Public Safety Academy, um, and other critical programs programs that have allowed us uh, to attract and retain great officers. At the end of fiscal 2017, let me just note that MPD had 3,821 sworn members, an increase of 84 members over fiscal year 2016, uh, which represents the first increase in the, the force since 2013. Uh, this increase includes 56 senior sergeants and 16 senior detectives, um, which was permitted by a piece of legislation that we moved to the council, uh, actually a piece of legislation that will need to be reauthorized uh, this year. In addition, at the end of 2017, we had 633 civilian employees, an increase of 58 members over the previous fiscal year. Uh, and when we are able to increase civilian employees at MPD, we're able to free up sworn officers um, for the duty that only a, a police officer can um, render to the residents of the district. So with that, let me uh, turn to uh, the chief of police to say uh, a little bit more about these new programs. And I should note too, uh, that we are joined by Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice, Kevin Donahue. Uh, and Kevin and I will be together uh, tomorrow with many of you and many members of the council uh, to cut the ribbon on our new Safer Stronger DC Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, uh, which we will open uh, as a partner to our, uh, our public safety initiatives in the district. Uh, and it will open in 42nd Street uh, Northeast in Ward 7. Chief. Okay, uh, good afternoon. I, um, you know, we have been hiring for the last couple of years and I've had the opportunity uh, to go and speak to the recruits as they graduate from our police academy. Uh, I always give them the same speech. Uh, and the first piece of advice that I give to them is that uh, everything that they've ever seen in movies and television shows about policing uh, to forget it. Uh, and the reason that I tell them that is because if you look at TV shows and you look at movies, what you see is a police officer who breaks all the rules, uh, shoots people, beats up people. Uh, that's not what we do in policing. Uh, policing is a service profession. Uh, and I think somehow in our country, uh, that message has been lost. Uh, we are going to try to attract really good young people to this profession. I'm very pleased that the mayor has supported this effort uh, with regards to a number of programs that we have. We have a, um, a housing incentive for our new recruits, which will afford them the opportunity as they're starting their careers to get $1,000 a month uh, for six months uh, to rent property in the District of Columbia. Uh, that is a great program in my eyes because uh, first of all, you're starting a young person off in their career with a little bit extra money so they can afford housing here in the district. I truly believe that if we get people uh, moving into the District of Columbia once they're here, uh, they will stay. So you will have police officers living in the community uh, where they, they police. Uh, the other incentive that we have is an employee housing assistance program, which off uh, offers loans and help with closing costs for purchasing a home in the District of Columbia. 
a home uh, up to the amount of about $620,000. So those are homes uh, that uh, our folks can find in the District of Columbia. So these are people a little bit further along in their career. Uh, if they want to uh, come and live in the city, uh, become a part of our city, uh, it's an excellent program. Uh, we have a uh, police officer retention program where we can pay back some of the student loans uh, that our officers have uh, when they come on the police department. Um, we have about a million dollars for that. Um, I think I'm probably forgetting something. Oh, we're going to bring in a firm to try and help us uh, recruit uh, young people into the profession of policing. Like I said at the very beginning, I think the message about what police officers do in our country, particularly what police officers do in our city, has been lost. So we're going to advertise what policing is all about, get some of the young people uh, that have uh, you know, their degrees to come into this profession, uh, particularly people who are uncomfortable uh, with what policing represents in our country because some of the narrative that's out there we would invite those people to come and join the Metropolitan Police Department and let's change that narrative together. Uh, the last thing that I will mention is that, and it's up here on the screen, uh, we have a new website that you can go to. It shows you all of the opportunities that we have uh, for joining our police department. You can join as a career service officer. You can join as one of our reserve officers or volunteer officers. Uh, it ex explains our cadet program, our cadet program is a program for young people who live in the District of Columbia and do not have 60 college credits. They can get a job with the Metropolitan Police Department. And while they're working with the police department, we will pay for them to get their 60 college credits so they can matriculate into becoming police officers. And then the last, uh, I think I already said the last, but one more last thing <laughs> is the, um, the public service academy that we have over at Anacostia High School. Uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders that are, have shown an interest uh, in our public service professions policing uh, in the city. Uh, we have a program over there where they can earn one college credit to start them on their way uh, to becoming police officers. Our hope is that some of those young people will join our cadet program, get their 60 college credits, uh, and then matriculate into becoming police officers with the Metropolitan Police Department. And that way we're going to get young kids uh, in our communities who've grown up in our city uh, to be police officers. So uh, we can take any questions that anyone has. Let me see. Is there anybody with a question? <laughs> it's an easy question. Uh, the uh, $620,000, is this is for current officers to move into the city from the suburbs or something like that? It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an employee program, but first responders in particular, it affords them uh, some loans to help them with the down payment and also some loans to help them with closing costs. If they remain in the home, one of the loans in particular, if they remain in the home uh, for more than five years, then they don't have to pay the loan back. Uh, and the loans are given at a 0% interest rate. It's a really good deal. So if you have people that are first responders, uh, they're interested in buying a home in the District of Columbia, uh, this gives them a little bit of help. Anyone else? All right, so for the young people in the room, we're hiring. <laughs> All right, all right, thank you.